It's May 2023 and I'm continuing my visit to KOTOR by taking a journey out into the bay on a speedboat to explore more of the wild beauty of Montenegro. The Bay of Kotor is a winding bay off the Adriatic Sea at the southern end of the historical region of Dalmatian that ends at the town of Kotor. But along its banks and in its waters include other historical towns such as Risan, Tivat and Persat. At the very end of the bay is the town of Kotor, protected on three sides by the mountains and now a UNESCO listed World Heritage Site. regular boat tours offering various combinations of options from simple sightseeing cruises around the bay to half-day excursions and more are available from KOTOR. I'd chosen a three-hour speedboat tour which covered the whole of the bay and even out into the Adriatic, helped by the boat being able to travel at a pretty high speed, particularly when out of the inner part of the bay. The tour started with a morning sail down the bay from KOTOR, heading past the small towns and villages that lined the bank of the bay towards the next large settlement of Parast, and just off the coast of the town, the two bay islands. St George Island is a natural island and houses the St George Benedictine Monastery, first constructed in the 12th century, with a graveyard serving as the final resting place for nobility from the local area. Whilst you can land on the island, access to the interior of the monastery is closed to the public except for one day of the year. Next door is our first stop of the day, the island of Our Lady of the Rocks. The island is man-made, built up over the centuries by a tradition of local fishermen returning from successful voyages, laying a rock on the spot where the icon of Madonna and Child was once found. Around that original rock, the additional human-placed rocks have built up to create the island that today houses a church to Our Lady of the Rocks. The tradition continues to this day and on the 22nd of July each year local residents take their boats out to the island and throw more rocks into the sea, slowly increasing the size of the island. Unlike the Benedictine Monastery on neighbouring St George Island, you're more than welcome to land on Our Lady of the Rocks Island and explore the church and when it's open, the small museum and gift shop. From here there are also amazing views in all directions, northeast towards the town of Parast, southeast back down the bay towards Kotor, and southwest through the narrow strait to the outer part of the bay. And it's through that strait that the tour now sails as we head into the outer bay with its waters widening out in the peninsula separating the bay from the Adriatic coming to view with its secret tunnels. The unaligned Yugoslav Navy dug tunnels into the hills of the peninsula here to create bunkers for their submarines, away from the prying eyes of both NATO and the Warsaw Pact. With the collapse of Yugoslavia, the pens lost their use, and today, if you have a boat, you can sail into them, assuming they're not currently being used as a film set, or while they most recently played in the Bond film Skyfall. Everyone knows James Bond, huh? Yeah. yeah. Zero, zero, seven. Yeah. This movie taken here. Really? Yes. Yeah. It was here. Which one? This one. No, which, uh, which movie? The last one. The last one? Yes. Oh, wow. Skyfall. Wow. I will do a new atmosphere in board. <laughs> <laughs> the captain slowly sails you into the tunnel whilst playing the theme tune for film just to add to the experience. To prevent a copyright strike against this video, the sound has been replaced, but to experience the full effect, follow the link in the top right corner for the raw footage.
After leaving the bunkers, the tour heads out into the bay, passing by the former fortress of Mamula Island, originally built by the Austro-Hungarians in the 1850s, along with forts on both land entrances to the bay. The fort was used as a concentration camp by Mussolini's fascists during World War II before being abandoned. At the time of sailing past, the finishing touches to a multi-million euro restoration and conversion process were taking place, the fort now open as a luxury resort hotel. Passing Mamula Island and we enter the Adriatic and sail a short distance along the coast, heading towards the Blue Cave. The cave is formed from the sea eating away at some of the rocks of the cliff, creating a space underneath the rock accessible from both sides. To prevent a copyright strike against this video, the sound has been replaced, but to experience the full effect, follow the link in the top right corner for the raw footage. Due to the two entrances to the cave, which point almost due east-west, and the shallowness of the water, the light reflected inside makes the water a very bright blue. The tour spends a bit of time out here in the Blue Cave, both bobbing around the inside of the cave, as well as exploring some of the smaller caves and cliffs nearby, as well as giving those passengers who want to an opportunity to go for a swim off a boat. Though even in early May, the Adriatic this far north wasn't appealing and the couple of people who did brave the waters reported it being pretty cold. The Blue Cave marks the furthest point on the tour and from here the boat turns around and puts both the power on the engines and the volume on the sound system up to max for a 45 minute high speed return to KOTOR. But the boat isn't the only way to get around this part of the country, with regular, if not particularly reliable, buses running from Kotor along the coast to Parast. The buses run alongside the edge of the bay for most of the journey, making a window seat on the left-hand side of the bus a great place to be in to take the views.
The bus to Parast also, combined for regular shuttle boats and the quayside, offers a much cheaper alternative for getting onto the island of Our Lady of the Rocks, with a boat shuttling across the 600 metres or so from the town to the island regularly. The first mentions of the town in Parast are in 1336, when it was noted as a small fishing village. As with Kotor, the arrival of the Venetian Empire saw the village expand, get fortified and built up the number of palaces and churches fitting of the Venetian city. With the main coast road passing round behind Parast, the centre of town is traffic free and a very pleasant and quiet retreat from the noise and bustle of Kotor up the coast. Kotor lies about 8 kilometres by road from Tivat Airport, the busiest of Montenegro's two international airports. Tivat is a popular summer seasonal destination for airlines from across Europe and the Middle East. There is also year-round service to Belgrade and Istanbul between Air Montenegro, Air Serbia and Turkish Airlines. Music